with time you get to you can kind of visualize how much grinding you need but at first it can be kind of hard sort of a continuous platform here I'll explain what we're doing here so initially just kind of get a guide flake going then flip it over remove another one off the opposite face and that prepares it for the longer flake same thing one over there one over there space it out and then you take your longer flake now I need to bring that edge up a little bit more in order to get this we've got plenty of width on this thing so if I didn't bring that edge up chances are the thinning flake might terminate over here and we wouldn't get that mass so by bringing that edge up further in this direction that allows us a greater opportunity and a greater chance of success to actually get one to remove that hump right there uh, of course that's true no matter what tool you're using kind of work my way into it there we go okay so now we've got a little bit right there which I think we can get from over here blow in that direction to actually remove that flake. So I'll take one over here first. Okay, that set it up pretty well. Didn't go quite as far as I'd hoped, but you can easily get it from right over here. Lately I've been using the, uh, the billet to prepare these platforms. In the past I used to use the hammer stones. And the hammer stones are fine. You can set up your platforms with the hammer stones. But what I find is sometimes they tend to be a little bit duller. And uh, it makes the release of the flake a little bit harder to do with the antler. So it seems like a platform that's set up with hammer stones. It's pretty suitable for hammer stones for the major thinning. but when you get into uh, using an uh, antler, it seems like you're better off to use the antler to set up the platforms. I mean, either way it'll work, and different nappers have their own way of doing it, but that's what's working for me right now. Okay, there's our thinning plate. This one here will just be down. If I drive it in like that, it's going to create a big hinge right here. So, Okay, so we're getting our face somewhat flattened out here can see that we've got a curvature. We've got some mass over there. We've got a concavity over there. So we need to remove some mass here and here. If that makes sense. Let me see if I can show that up in there. Okay, so uh, let's see if we can do that. So prepare a continuous platform from here over to the, the tip. drop down to that smaller billet here in a minute. This billet here is a little bit softer. The other one, for whatever reason, seems like it's a little more weathered. It's harder and I, I kind of like it. But the softer billet definitely is nice too and it has its uses. Yeah, I think we'll start on this edge. I could either do it from this edge over here or from this edge over here, but I'm going to do it with this edge. We've got our platform all set up. It's continuous. And we'll go over that again. Let's take a little one off the opposite edge like that in order to get it started. Okay, I got it started. Space them out. Okay. That platform is not quite right. It's a little bit too close to the face. Okay, that worked out nicely. Now for good measure we'll take off some thin ones over here as well.
I use a smaller billet. It stepped just a little bit because it was touching on here, but it's okay. It's early on. Uh, I think we'll go over here and get this opposite in, which is what I was describing earlier. Trying to remove some thinning flakes over there. Nice, continuous platform again. A little flake to get it started. Here's our first one. Space it out. This isn't going to go very far because, okay. Get this end thin down a little bit. Gotta be careful working these ends. Even at this stage, this is a small, and it's fairly thin already. And uh, if you're working those ends too aggressively, it could snap on you. Sometimes I forget to thin the base, and then I get far enough along, and I realize I should have thinned it, and, and it could be a lot harder in the end. So, getting fairly flat over there. I think there's still a little bit of convexity, just a little bit of dished out this right there, but I want to get some of this on here. We'll drive some big thinning flakes with this continuous edge platform here. You don't want that edge too close to this face. You want it up so that the uh, flake is thick enough. It's sort of like a transit line. It gives you a point of reference or a starting point where all of your flakes are being directed off from that, that line, that particular straight line. And uh, that really helps your point get nice and flat. And it can, if you space them out right, it can really make for a nice looking flake pattern as well. A lot of times I have to readjust this platform. I'm setting it all up at once. Sometimes I can march right on down it, but sometimes as I'm going along, things change and it just doesn't look right. So now we can space it out way over here because that flake tended to go off in that direction. You can see that it's too thin now. It won't release right there, this next small flake, spacing flake. So you flip it over and that's how you, you get it over to where you want it to be. 